What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy. We want to welcome you to the month of April, a very important month in the world of sports. It's the week of the Masters. Today is Monday, April 3rd, uh, 2023. Hopefully, you did not get fooled on Saturday when it was April Fools. We got the Masters coming up tonight. Uh, the day I'm putting this video together, obviously, we got the national championship in the world of college basketball. We had Major League Baseball's opening day, soon enough, the NBA Finals and playoffs and stanley cup finals and playoffs and all this stuff's going on all around us but of course this month also brings the 2023 nfl draft which is what we're here to talk about today make sure you do subscribe to the blog and the boys youtube channel we will have all sorts of coverage in the lead up to the draft here for you uh, not just on our channel but on our website blog and on social media etc cetera, etc cetera. and today we're kind of starting to get a little bit deeper into that starting to get ready uh tried and true ready for the draft with us being a little bit over three weeks away obviously the Cowboys have done an enormous job of preparing for the draft when it comes to establishing uh, veteran presence at would-be positions of need. The Cowboys went into the 2022 NFL draft with glaring needs along the offensive line at pass rusher and at wide receiver, which is why it was not a coincidence to see them take Tyler Smith in the first round, Sam Williams in the second, and Jalen Tolbert in the third. Now, Tyler Smith, actually today is Tyler Smith's birthday, so happy birthday to him. And Sam Williams both had serious moments of flash and greatness and promise as rookies. We'll see what happens with Jalen Tolbert in his second season. But because the Cowboys have done things like trading for uh, Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore and signing the players that they have in free agency, even Chuma Doga, uh, who comes in and gives them some depth along the offensive line, they have set themselves up very well so that they do not have to be, or rather that they are not pigeonholed in one direction or another. They have not painted themselves into a corner. But that is not to say that the Cowboys don't have some positional needs. Maybe you think corner is one of them. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Like I said, we're going to be getting more and more into the draft as we get closer and closer and closer. We'll talk about some draft ideas as well on Tuesday's roundtable here on the channel. Wanted to take a look, just kind of a 30,000-foot perspective um, in the coming weeks and the coming days um, You know, as we release videos here on the channel. We'll talk about these positions specifically. But now that we're you know, the dust has really settled, um, like like in the movie Dune, um, on free agency. We now really have an idea in terms of what the Cowboys need positionally. We know that they need help to some degree along the offensive line. We know that they need help to some degree along the defensive line. We know they need help to some degree, obviously, at tight end, running back, wide receiver, and corner. These are the positions that really, I think, kind of jump out at you. Now, we can talk about other things, obviously, but I think these are the most glaring. These are the most pressing, but again, an important foundation for all the conversations that we're going to have is that there is not one that is like a neon sign that is making us freak out the way we talked about those positions last year. So when we look at offensive line. Obviously, the Cowboys. Uh, let's see if I can switch this view up a little bit here. I, I don't like that. Let's see. This is what I'm. That's what I'm going for here. All right. Uh, there's some new um, ways you can play around with this uh, software that we use, and so you know, kind of learning as we go. Uh, if you like the view, let me know. But offensive line. Cowboys, like we said, uh, were able to bring in Truma Doga, but they saw Connor McGovern walk. And I don't know how much you buy or I buy all this conversation about Terrence Steele. Now, the gang on our roundtable last week talked about the Terrence Steele to left guard conversation that kind of began when the Cowboys were at the owners meetings in Arizona last week. Now, maybe you believe that the Cowboys are seriously considering playing Terrence Steele at left guard. Maybe you believe that this is all posturing. Uh, as it relates to contractual discussions, the Cowboys did place a second round tender on Terrence Steele this offseason. They would obviously love to get a long term deal done with him. And maybe they want to pay him like a guard. Maybe they don't want to um, obviously establish a price point relative to tackle. Tackle money is very expensive in the NFL. So this could be kind of part of that song and dance. It could be an idea that they are seriously considering. But it is my belief, and that is the common one uh, throughout the uh, sort of different sectors of Cowboys Nation, that the best offensive line that the Cowboys can field from left to right, uh, presuming health, of course, is Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, the birthday boy, Tyler Biotish, Zach Martin, and Terrence Steele. If we have to live in a world where Tyron Smith is injured, that's where offensive line becomes a greater need. Tyler Smith kicks out to left tackle, obviously, in that situation. And maybe you believe that Tyron should be the swing tackle, and that should be the way the Cowboys rock all of the time. But if Tyron Smith is unavail uh, unavailable for whatever reason, whether it's a conscious one or not, you now have a hole at left guard. Now, maybe you think that Chuma Doga can fill that hole, but it would not hurt you. It would not hinder you in any way, shape, or form to walk away with a premier guard option in this draft class. Osiris Torrance is an option out of Florida. Steve Avila out of TCU. Maybe the Cowboys were able to draft Steve Avila in the second round. That gives them a starting guard option, not just in the here and now, but obviously as they segue into the future and what this offensive line looks like 
And I know we don't like to talk about this, but even when Zach Martin is gone, this is a young offensive line in the making with Tyler Smith now being the left tackle of the future, whether he plays that position this season or not, obviously remains to be seen. But if you can establish a legitimate presence at left guard with some maybe center flexibility, depending on what happens with Tyler Biotish, if he does move on in free agency in 2024, offensive line is a position that you have to have to have to devote some resources to in this draft. And we all think the Cowboys will do that. And again, it doesn't hurt if Terrence Steele is your right tackle of the future, which is why the Cowboys should hopefully get a contract done this offseason. But moving on, and none of these are, or rather, these aren't necessarily ranked. Um, this is just kind of, again, a 30,000-foot perspective as we begin our coverage uh, in a more specific and detailed way of the 2023 NFL Draft. Defensive line, we kind of threw that, that blanket over that. Um, you can never have enough edge rushers. I think that that's just a general great rule of thumb. Um, but the Cowboys don't have a severe need at edge rusher here in 2023. And a big reason for that was they were able to bring back Dante Fowler. You obviously have Demarcus Lawrence. Micah Parsons is a part of that mix. You can't uh, not include him, obviously, even if his positional alignment on the depth chart is as a linebacker. But so you've got Micah, you've got Demarcus Lawrence, you've got Dorrance Armstrong, you've got Sam Williams, you've got Dante Fowler coming back. You have a lot of options. You have a platoon of players that you can cycle through. And so it's not your most pressing need, but again, it is never a bad idea to take another edge rusher in the draft. Where the concern along the defensive line comes, I think, is in the middle, along the interior. Now, the Cowboys were able to bring Jonathan Hankins back on a one-year deal. That's a big deal. They still have Quinton Bohana. They still have Osa Udigizua. They still have Neville Gallimore, who's now entering his contract year with the team. But the Cowboys were not able to bring back Carlos Watkins. Carlos leaving the Cowboys for a one-year deal with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, would the Cowboys spend their first-round draft pick on a, a defensive tackle? They obviously haven't done so in, thir in over 30 years, actually. And so that feels extremely unlikely. But it doesn't mean that they don't have a need. So, again, if you're looking into the future, if you're playing the game of Jonathan Hankins being on a one-year deal, of this being Neville Gallimore's contract, not that he's a big part of the rotation at this point in time, it is never a bad idea to have the middle of that Venn diagram so you can always be ready to transition into the future beyond what you currently have on your roster at this moment in time. Tight end is incredibly obvious. Obviously, Dalton Schultz left in free agency for the Houston Texans. I don't know that any Cowboys fan is bummed or or upset about that. It made sense, obviously, for Dallas to not pay him big money. Got the one-year deal worth up to $9 million with the Texans. And I know that that was a low price point, and we were all kind of saying, well, why didn't the Cowboys pay that, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily a move that um, you know, we prioritized as Cowboys fans. We prioritized other things. And so Dalton Schultz walked and we, we wish him the best of luck. And we all believe in Jake Ferguson. We all believe in Peyton Hendershot. We all believe in Sean McEwen. But the Cowboys, if they are going to be this West Coast offense in the image of Mike McCarthy, if they are going to be airing this out, moving downfield at a very, very rapid pace, it would not be a bad idea to have an elite pass catching option in the fold at tight end. Now, maybe you believe that it's Dalton Kincaid. Maybe you believe it's Michael Mayer. Maybe you believe it's Darnell Washington. Um, I'm coming around personally. I talked about this in our last Madden video um, to the idea of a tight end in the first round. I still would not feel great about it, uh, but um, it would, you know, I could get on board and, and, and the Cowboys do have a need. And if you told me that the Cowboys starting offense and 11 personnel um, from a skill position standpoint, was C.D. Lamb, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup, C.D. in the slot, Dalton Kincaid, Tony Pollard. I mean, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> I mentioned our Madden franchise. I would love to play with that team on Madden. And so maybe we're less than a month away from that becoming a reality for this team. Uh, but tight end is definitely a need. Now, this is a very deep class, relatively speaking, when it comes to the tight end. So you might not feel like the Cowboys have to pay a premium to come away with one that you can do some serious damage with um, because – there are a lot of options, but you might feel like Dalton Kincaid is the guy. Just picking him as an example. Maybe you want to go for it now. Maybe you want to add that dynamic playmaker now. And so I'm I'm coming around. I'm, I'm becoming a little bit more open to that idea than I certainly was in the past. Running back, kind of the same thing, but a little bit of a lower priority. Now, the Cowboys, obviously, this offseason placed the franchise tag on Tony Pollard, released Ezekiel Elliott. They still have Malik Davis. They were able to bring Rico Dowdle back. So the group as a whole seems to be set. Uh, now, Tony Pollard on the franchise tag, which he did sign, is only locked down for one season. And maybe you're worried about that. Maybe you feel like, I want to make sure that we have some option in the future. And the name that just will not go away is Bijan Robinson, one of the most talented players in the draft class, a consensus top 10 talent, but he is a running back. And the nature of that discussion, the volatility of that subject is well documented. There are a lot of people, myself included, who generally do not feel like spending a first round pick on a running back. 
is a good, smart, or wise thing. But if the value is there, the positional value, if you're picking 26th and you're able to come away with a consensus top 10 player and that player just happens to be a running back, you kind of do just live with it at the end of the day. If the Cowboys added Bijan Robinson to this mix, um, obviously they would have an incredible backfield between him and Tony Pollard, uh, but um, it would be a running back and you would be missing out on those things. So you can talk yourself, you know, again, it's a fun conversation to have. Um, the likelihood of Bijan being available at 26, I think, is really low, uh, but it is still a position of need. I think we said this a year ago because we knew in 2022 that the Cowboys were going to be at a point in 2023 where they could cut Ezekiel Elliott, which they did, and where they could let Tony Pollard walk. And they obviously did not do that. But we thought that the Cowboys' backfield might be 100% difference from a general perspective in 2023. Now, the Cowboys brought back Tony Pollard, like we said. So that's 50% that is returning. Again, just talking about the lion's share of the carries here. But it is very possible that Tony Pollard is gone next season. It is very possible that the Cowboys just kind of ride the tag out and let him enter true free agency in 2024. And they could just draft a running back then. Again, the priority is not super high on running back. You do It is a position that matters, right? People love to say running backs don't matter. But it is not a position that I think we're going to lose sleep over. But I, I really thought the Cowboys would spend a day three pick on the running back position last year. Hassan Haskins out of Michigan was a name that I really liked at that point in time. Um it just didn't happen. I mean, you know, and so maybe that winds up happening this year. Maybe the Cowboys finally do throw a day three pick. Maybe they throw a day two pick. We don't know. But running back, you cannot say it is not a need. It's just not a pressing one. Now, wide receiver, um, the Brandon Cooks trade kind of, I don't want to say delayed, but, but kind of solved that potential problem the Cowboys when, when when the Cowboys lost to the 49ers in the divisional round of the playoffs the number one goal was to get more explosive the number one goal was to add more playmakers more dynamic playmakers specifically to this offense and the Cowboys did that by trading for Brandon Cooks now there is chatter around the NFL on the internet that Cedric Wilson is a player who the Miami Dolphins would consider trading away and maybe you're somebody that feels like bring him back bring Cedric home uh, maybe you're somebody like our own Chris Halling at BTB who still wants to see the Cowboys bring in DeAndre Hopkins maybe you still want to see the Cowboys sign Odell Beckham Jr. Junior. I am not opposed to the Cowboys spending their first round pick on a wide receiver. They obviously have a contract discussion to have with CeeDee Lamb, who is now eligible for a new deal. Now they can and in all likelihood will pick up his fifth year option. So they don't have to worry about that right away, but you can never have enough playmakers. And we've talked about that obviously by way of tight end and, and running back, but you know, I'm not as concerned and I don't think you're as concerned as I was when the season ended because of the Brandon Cooks trade, but it is a need nonetheless. Maybe the Cowboys do want to kind of kick this can down the road in terms of worry and panic because they have CD, they have Brandon Cooks, they have Michael Gallup. Maybe they still believe in Jalen Tober and there's no reason not to. Jalen Tober was, was tasked with doing a lot last year that won't necessarily be the case here in 2023. They still have Simi Fajoko as a project to kind of work on. Noah Brown is gone, so those snaps are going to go somewhere and they could be developmental snaps obviously for for different players down the depth chart but but wide receiver is nonetheless a position of need and corner i think corner goes with wide receiver in the sense that uh the term band-aid the term kicking the can down the road has been applied to both the stefan gilmore and brandon cook's trades the cowboys made they are wonderful trades they are a plus trades they are out of this world home run out of the park i don't know how you go out of the park if you're already out of the world but you get my point they are wonderful trades that the cowboys made we're all extraordinarily happy that the cowboys traded for these players but you could look at stefan gilmore as a one-year rental for the cowboys now that's totally fine there's no problem with that whatsoever uh but the cowboys are at this point in time entering trayvon diggs's contract year. trayvon diggs is not under contract with the dallas cowboys for 2024 right that is truth that is just a true piece of information um and maybe they get that contract done it would behoove them to get that contract done even if they get that contract done are they going to bring stefan gilmore back next year they're going to let him walk you have to have somebody to pair uh with trayvon diggs obviously for the future because stefan gilmore as much as we all believe that he's going to help the cowboys out now you have to look for the future that's part of what the process of the entire nfl draft is uh so corner is a need now wide receiver and corner again lower priorities because of the trades for Gilmore and for Cooks, uh, but they are things that the Cowboys will have to figure out nonetheless throughout the process of the draft as a whole. Those are the positions of need for the Cowboys as we see them as we enter the month of April, the month of the NFL draft. So we'll see what it all has in store, but our draft coverage is going to be picking up here slowly but surely on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. So please do subscribe. My name is RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at RJ Ochoa, on TikTok at RJ dot ochoa you can send me an email archie.ochoa at sbnation.com or you can leave a comment down below thanks for hanging out everybody we love you all we'll see you next time